the hydrogen powered car. It sounds a little bit like a science experiment, something that might be dangerous and irrelevant to Australian road users, right? Wrong. Some of the world's largest car companies are heavily invested in hydrogen as a successor to petrol and diesel fuel, and Hyundai is one of them. So we're going to take this iX35 fuel cell all the way from Italy to Germany, across the Alps, on a thousand kilometre road trip to prove that hydrogen cars have what it takes to make it in the real world. Hydrogen is hard to come by in Australia, so we put the Hyundai to the test on a 1,000 kilometre journey. Starting in Venice, we drove north and refueled in Bolzano, heading over the Alps to Innsbruck in Austria before driving through Munich and Stuttgart and arriving in Frankfurt. The route took in high-speed autobahns, steep mountain climbs, winding country roads and inner-city traffic that put the technology through its paces. Now this looks like a regular SUV, but it works nothing like what you have at home. You fill it up here with hydrogen, pressurised to 700 bar or around 10,000 psi. Now that flows through the car to a fuel cell under the bonnet, which transforms the hydrogen gas into water and electricity. The electricity drives the front wheels through an electric motor, while the water leaves the rear of the car through a tailpipe. It's amazing stuff. Hyundai isn't the only car company keen to explore the potential of hydrogen. Toyota has started selling the groundbreaking Mirai in overseas markets, while Honda has offered the FCX Clarity to American customers for a few years now. Hydrogen is important on a variety of fronts. Putting aside environmental benefits, it gives manufacturers a vital tool in the fight to reduce fleet average CO2 emissions, while customers, in effect, get an electric car that you fill up just like a petrol model. The fuel cell is a complex system, but refilling it is really simple. You take a connection from the hydrogen station and snap it onto the car. From there, it's pretty much automated. Press a button to fill it up, and in three to five minutes, you've got five and a half kilos of hydrogen, which gives you a range of about 600 kilometers. Pretty comparable to a regular car. It also drives just like a regular car. So one of the things that we really wanted to do on this trip is prove that the iX35 can make it in the real world. And in Europe, that means being able to travel long distances at high speed. We've traveled from Italy, through Austria, across the mountains to Germany, and now we're on the Autobahn, where you can drive as fast as you'd like, as the conditions allow. Right now, we are cruising on 175 kilometers an hour, which is absolutely immense for a car of this type. I mean, if the straight line performance of the car isn't ultra strong. We've got 100 kilowatts of power and about 300 newton meters of torque, which in a car that weighs around 1.8 tons isn't outstanding. But it's good enough. I mean, in the real world, it's not about being a performance car. You know, you can keep up with traffic and you know, here we are hooking along the Autobahn at 180 k's an hour. It is absolutely doing the job that you would want from a family SUV. There's no real compromise on the road in how this thing drives. If you look at the iX35 fuel cell, not as an SUV, but as a method of propulsion, it is super impressive. You know, we're getting around 450 k's out of a tank while going pretty fast, and you can go much, much further than that, 600 k's or even more, if you're pretty careful with it. The concept is there. You know, this is something that works, and it's very early stages too. This is Hyundai's first crack at a production car with a fuel cell drivetrain. There's much more to come. And I think the next generation car that we see in 2018 could be pretty special. That said, the iX35 wasn't quite perfect. We couldn't carry a spare wheel and the boot space was smaller due to the tank in the back. It also struggled at high altitudes due to a lack of oxygen needed for the fuel cell process to work properly. And there were inconsistencies between the three models that Hyundai took on this trip. One felt absolutely gutless, though the other two had enough pep. Now those points could be attributed to the fact that our cars were pre-production models but the technology has larger hurdles to overcome. Hydrogen cars rely on complex and expensive infrastructure that is only just starting to emerge. It's certainly not as simple as plugging an electric car into a wall. The other issue is that the fuel is usually sourced by refining natural gas, a process that emits large amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. That gas, in America at least, is often sourced through fracking, a process that has environmental issues all of its own. It's possible to produce clean hydrogen, but the costs involved aren't practical for normal road users. The technology has a long way to go, but as for our 1000 kilometer test across Europe, I have to say that the car has performed quite well. So here we are in Frankfurt, having driven 1000 kilometers across Europe in the iX35 fuel cell. And while there's no doubt that it's an immense technical achievement, what makes it really special is that it's just like a regular car. You fill it up, you drive it 600 kilometers, and then you fill it up again at the end of the day. What makes this car special is that it reduces our dependence on fossil fuels, emitting only water vapour from its exhaust pipe. That's what makes it special.